Hi friends, it's Mrs. Tucker again. So the other time we were working on our lesson, this is lesson two, story four of our Sanford Harmony. The last story that we just talked about was the beginning of this story. It was called The School Dance and we talked about part one of the school dance and how two friends were feeling a little bit differently about the different activity that they had to do to perform for family night. So today's story is the school dance part two. So we're going to finish the story where we left off because remember with the last story it said to be continued, which meant that we were just going to kind of end it right there and talk a little bit before we read the rest of the story. So for today's story, the school dance part two, I want you to think about has there ever been a time when you felt happy, sad, or scared and a friend knew just how you felt? Have you ever known just how a friend was feeling because you felt that way before too? So having empathy means that you feel and understand the way that someone else feels. And that can help you be a good and caring friend to him or her. In this story, The School Dance Part 2, two friends discover that they each have things that are hard for them to do and that they both feel the same way when they have to do those things. So as you listen to the story, I want you to pay attention to what happens when the characters realize that they have had very similar or same experiences and they can really understand how the other person is feeling. So without further ado, let's read The School Dance Part 2. It was a busy week at school for Kenny and Annie. They were working as partners to make a poster about a book that they had read, and they were also part of the Ocean Life dance team that would be performing at family night in just a few days. Kenny was very nervous about being in the dance, so he hadn't been practicing with the team. Annie was excited about dancing, but she was frustrated that Kenny wouldn't practice with them. One day, after school, Annie and Kenny met at the treehouse to put the finishing touches on their book poster. They had been working on it together for a while, and it looked really good. We still need to decide who's going to say what when we give our presentation, presentation to the class, Kenny reminded her. Annie looked away. I hate talking in front of the class, she thought. I'm probably going to have to get all the words, I'm probably going to get all the words wrong. I think you should just do all the talking and I'll hold the poster, she told Kenny. Oh, great, thought Kenny. So I have to do all the work? But it's your favorite book, he replied, so I think you should get to talk too. Well, I just don't want to, Annie answered a little too quickly. Kenny looked at Annie and could tell that she was upset about something. What's wrong, he asked. Annie sighed. I get really nervous about talking in front of the whole class. Then my words get all mixed up and I get embarrassed. Kenny knew just how Annie felt. That's how I feel when I have to dance, he said. It's really hard for me to do that kind of stuff. Really, said Kenny, said Annie. Suddenly she realized that she had been wrong about Kenny. When you wouldn't practice with our team, I thought you just didn't care about the dance. I actually was kind of mad about it, but now I know just how you must feel. Kenny grinned at her. I do care about the dance, but I'm kind of klutzy. I just don't want to mess everything up. Wow, said Annie. I wish we could have told each other before. It sounds like we both get nervous doing things that are hard for us. Hmm, said Annie. Maybe I can help you learn the dance steps better. I'll give it a try, agreed Kenny, and I can help you practice talking about our poster. The two kids gave each other a high five. It's a deal. For the rest of the week, Kenny and Annie met at the treehouse after school to work on the dance and the presentation. Kenny learned how to do the dance steps without tripping, and Annie practiced talking very slowly while she explained what was on their poster. It was finally the day for the kids to present their book poster to the class. When their names were called, Kenny eagerly jumped up out of his seat. Then he turned around and noticed that Annie was frowning and getting up very slowly. I bet she's still a little nervous, he thought. Come on, Annie, he whispered. I'll be right there with you. You'll be great. Annie smiled back at Kenny and followed him up to the front of the room. They told the class about the book they read and explained everything on their poster. Whenever Annie forgot what she was supposed to say, Kenny would smile at her, and then she was able to relax and try again. The class gave them a big round of applause when they were finished. 
That evening at family night, the kids walked onto the stage with butterflies in their stomachs, ready to perform their dance for a room full of people. During the dance, Kenny accidentally bumped into one of the seahorses with his clownfish tail, but Annie gave him a nod of encouragement from across the stage, and he got right back into line. When the music stopped, the audience cheered loudly. At the end of family night, Annie and Kenny sat down together on the empty stage. We did a great job today, exclaimed Kenny. Thanks for helping me learn the dance. You're welcome, said Annie, and thanks for listening to me practice our presentation over and over. She grabbed Kenny's fin and pulled him to his feet. Let's go get something to eat now. I'm so hungry after all that dancing. Good idea, answered Kenny. I know just how you feel. And that's where we'll stop for today. Friends, if you're with me in the classroom, we're going to talk a little bit more about this story. If you're not with me in the classroom, I'd like you to go back to your assignment in Seesaw and finish that assignment that I have for you today. And I will be talking to you again soon. Bye.